Hello, hello, hello. Do do. Hi. Hello, hello. Should I take a picture for my Twitch story? OMG, wait, this is actually, I like this. Hi guys, though, how are we doing? How's everyone doing today? Happy hump day. Happy hump day. Anyone do any humping today? Just kidding, I don't wanna know that. Unless it was out, some absolutely outstanding humping. Um, but hi, Rototoku. Hi, Joey. Hi, Infernal. Faker, thank you so much for the tier one. Happy 14 months. I appreciate that. Um, sorry, I felt like I had something right there. My lips are a little chapped. Let me put on some. My room is so freaking bright right now. OMG. Hold on, wait. Let me post. Okay, wait. I'm trying to... Let's do my go live checklist. Let me... <laughs> Let me let me do all this. Let me do all this real quick. Let me let me do this real quick. Um, my story. Let me delete this selfie that I took because TikTok stories stay making me look fucked up and fugly. Uh, Swagner, thank you. So or hello, hello from Germany. What am I even? I have. Uh, my brain is all over the place today. Um, but hi Chadwick. Hi Ladin. How's everyone doing today? Should I change my background colors to the huge? The huge? The not huge? I don't know, man. Should we keep it bright? Or should we change it to a color? You can't even really see the color, so I'm like, should we just keep it bright? I can also just turn it off. My room looks so white without the colors, though. And since someone pointed that out on Monday, I, like, can't not notice it anymore. At least when I stream during the day, because I feel like the daylight is making it look super bright. Um, okay. Anywho. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, no, guys, I literally got electrocuted yesterday. And it was my fault because I was a dumbass, honestly. But I'd, I've never been electrocuted before, so it was, it was, um, electrifying. But, um, ha 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 What means that, electrocuted? It means that you have electricity running through your body. You touch electricity and then you get shocked. Uh, yeah. But it's because I, I was just dumb. I was, I was just, I was unplugging something, basically. And... Yeah, it was really weird. My hand was really tingly and I got, I got like scared because I was like, oh my gosh, like how serious is getting electrocuted? I was like, I was like, do I need to like go to the doctor and make sure my heart is okay? I did not do that. So if I randomly have a heart attack on stream, um, at least you know why. Um, but yeah, be careful around outlets. Was it like a strong shock? I mean, yeah, like when it happened, I like yanked my hand back immediately. Like just, you know, just that pure animal instinct. Um, but like afterwards, it was like, like it, it was so, it was weird cause it like wasn't like pain. Like, you know, like when you like burn your hand on something and it like hurts so bad. Like, I feel like the shock was more, it was like a tingle. Like my hand was like tingling for like at least 10 minutes. After, okay, maybe 10, 10 minutes is long, but like tingling for a while afterwards. And yeah, it was just like very tingly and I felt it along my whole arm, but like obviously mostly in my hand where I the connection was um but yeah first time for everything <laughs> uh don't stick a fork into the toaster zap yeah it was probably like around that strength though i was but i was also thinking i was like i feel like when people get electrocuted like it seemed way more dramatic it seems way more dramatic than like when i did it like when i did it it was just like oh and that was it but I swear, what was that guy? Wasn't there like a Twitch streamer that was like banned for self-harm because he kept like electrocuting himself on stream? Like for content, like for content. He was doing it on purpose. But he, I'm pretty sure he was like sticking a fork in a toaster or so something like that. He was doing something. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? 
I don't know. But he was he was doing something. He was doing something. And um, like when he did it, there was like sparks and it like blew him. It like knocked him back physically or something. I don't even know. He was airborne for a sec. <laughs> I was not airborne, so mine was not that dramatic. I'm, I believe he also shit himself. <laughs> that also did not happen to me. Pretty disappointing, gosh. Um, AC makes you jump off, DC makes you flex slash grab hold. The reaction depends on the strength of the current slash voltage. Interesting, actually. Yeah, I don't know, because basically I like... Yeah, I don't know. I... I, I yeah. But as it goes, <laughs> new life experience under the belt. So exciting. I love trying new things. What can I say? I'm a fiend for, for trying new things. And anything goes. I'll do, I'll do anything once. <laughs> um, so now I can say I've been electrocuted. So fun. Um, but yeah, the power went out yesterday, actually. If, any, if there's any fellow Chicagoans in chat, there was, like, a pretty bad storm here last night, and that's actually why I didn't stream. I didn't stream last night, um, because literally, <laughs> because the power went out, and then, and then I got electrocuted, and then I was already, like, raging so much that I was like, bro, fuck this. Like, I can't deal with this anymore. But, yeah. Your girl was having a bit of a rough day yesterday. Um, am I burned or hurt? No, I'm not burned or hurt. I'm completely okay. I was a little concerned afterwards, but I seem like I'm fine. I'm sure that if there was negative repercussions, I would have experienced, hopefully I would have experienced them already. You know, nothing's gonna like pop up on me. I feel like it's, I feel like getting electrocuted is one of those things where it's like, if it's serious, you'll know right away, right? There's not like, <laughs> nothing's gonna pop up on me randomly, right? <laughs> You got a low-level shock most people have at some point. I'm getting the storm right now. Oh, really? Is it to pass on to you? Yeah, it's, like, been sunnier, but I was so sad because it was, like, warm. It was, like, 70 degrees a couple days ago, and now it's back to being cold, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Should we check what the weather is outside? Because I don't, I don't go outside, so I don't actually know. 32 degrees. Womp, womp. Oh! <gasps> No way. Oh my god, it's gonna be 67 on Sunday. I'm gonna have to go outside. I'm gonna have to go touch some grass. Y'all are not- hopefully y'all are not hearing from me on Sunday. If y'all see me stream on Sunday, tell me to end the stream immediately and go touch grass because- because I'm so guilty of like in the winter time, I'm always like, oh my god, like it's just too cold. It's too cold for this, too cold for that. And I, I can't, I can't be allowed to have that as an excuse anymore. I saw a freaking, I saw a tweet that was like, oh yeah, like just spend that, just spend another night at home instead of going out. Like, you, you know, who cares about wasting another weekend in your 20s? You have infinite of those, right? Really made me think, really made me think. It really slapped me back into reality. Of like, damn, I should not be wasting my weekends in my 20s. Because one day I'm going to be a decrepit old woman and I'm going to have no choice but to stay inside and chillax every weekend no matter what because my bones are decaying or whatever. Unless, unless we got some science guys stepping up. But yeah, I've decided that I really need to try and do something fun every weekend because, because I don't. Because I feel like I've recently been having a lot of weekends where I don't do anything. Or I literally do nothing. So, at least I, I think I need to, I feel like I need to like plan something for myself to do once a week. But, but I don't want to do it by myself. <laughs> I was telling Claire, I was like, we should have like craft days. There's this place in Chicago where you can like go and make your own charm necklaces. So, I was going to try and convince her to do that with me. And then I vlog it and then content. Woohoo. Double whammy. Make it a Tao weekend. I haven't been to Tao in a while. Tao. Tao is one of those places. Well, I don't know. Okay, because cause the last time I went to Tao, we like went. I went with my friend and she had like a promoter, which is always nice. Because then we didn't have to like stand in line or anything. We got to like go into the VIP section. We had like a table and everything. And we we're like, okay, this is nice. But Mm, here's where they get you okay because like these clubs obviously these clubs hire promoters and the promoters job is to bring hot girls into the club right so I'm showing up one of the hot girls being invited to the club right sounds sweet deal 
However, the reason why the club is wanting to do this is because they want the dudes that are spending the freaking thousands of dollars on bottles getting scammed getting scammed like a motherfucker, paying like $500 for a bottle of vodka that they can get for 30 bucks at the freaking grocery store. Um, although actually alcohol be expensive nowadays. I don't know if you can, I don't know how much alcohol costs. I have not bought a bottle, bottle of vodka in a while. Anyways. And so like last time when I went, we were like at this table and like, I was having fun. And then like they come up to us and they're like, oh, like, I don't know what, I don't even know what they were saying. Like they were talking to my friends and I was like kind of side. I didn't really know anyone else that we were with. And so like my friend started to like walk and I just like followed her because I didn't really know anyone else that we were with. They walk us over to this table of these dudes, these men, these older men. And um, they were like, oh yeah, like just have drinks, just have some drinks with them. They'll like probably buy you whatever. We like walk up and the guys are like, oh, like ladies, ladies, like what drinks do you guys want? What drinks do you want? I, I was there and I was, just, I was literally drinking water and I was like, oh, like I'm not really drinking like tonight. Like I'm just gonna drink some water. And they're like, no, like that's lame. Like I'm gonna drink blah, 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 blah. Basically TLDR, they were like trying to make us talk and entertain these like weird older guys. And I was like, bro, I would not have agreed to come here if I knew that I was gonna have to do this. So I actually have not been back to Taos since then because it was like, it was just weird. I don't know. And I mean, like the guys were nice, I guess, but it just made, it made me feel a little weird, but yeah yeah but i do want to go out i do like see the thing is is i do like going to the club i like going to the club i like i like getting a little drunky and dancing and whatnot but i feel like there's just way too many like creepy dudes in the club <laughs> like more so than bars i feel like in bars at least people are a little more civil i feel like in the club people just like to get like fucked up beyond their limits <laughs> Um, the motor pimped you out, LOL. I know, for real. I was like, bruh, like, I, <laughs> and maybe this is like a me thing. Like, I don't know. I just, I feel like I, I don't think it's worth it to talk to some creepy dude for a drink. Like, I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just buy my own drink and enjoy my time and spend my time as I please. <laughs> Um, hi Plink, hello. Love the stream setup, thank you. My desk is a little messy, but I actually love that I have this mic here now so that I can just like block the mess and you guys can't, you guys can't see it as much. <laughs> um, like a hostess bar in Tokyo. Oh, wait, what? Hostess bar. Oh, that's like a thing, right? Actually, I think I know what you're talking about. I feel like I've heard of that. Escape room with Claire. Oh my gosh, that would be fun. I actually tried to do an escape room a little bit ago and I failed, literally failed. So I'm, I, I gotta show, I gotta show back up there and like get to the point where I did like, you know, speed run the part that I already got through and try to finish it. Um, my day's been good. Thanks for asking. Actually, my day was a little rough. I had a rough start to my day. I just was like having the hardest time getting out of bed today. And yeah. And that's always sucks, you know? I feel like I feel like when you're having like a rough morning, I feel like that just like affects all these other things. So it's like everything that I meant to do didn't happen later, but as it goes, as it goes. Um, one of my good friends is a resident DJ there. Next time he's there, you can get a table without talking to old guys. Okay, actually good to know. Good to know because yeah, because I, I mean, I like going out and, but I do like, <laughs> I just like having a table so that I can like put my stuff down. Or, and I can like sit down if I want to. Cause I'm like spoiled, honestly. I'm spoiled from like being able to go out with promoters because I don't know, I don't like, at least I, maybe I'm thinking about the winter time. Cause like, I, I'm not one of those girls that just like, just goes out in the winter time with like just a dress on their little heels. I'm sorry, but I'm bringing my parka. I'm bringing my full winter coat with me when we go out and there better be a place for me to put it down at because I cannot brave the cold. I cannot. Chad, do y'all do y'all bring your winter coats out with you when you go out or you just brave the cold and hope that your alcohol blanket keeps you warm? <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. Um, how many stuffed animals do I have? I have a lot. Oh my God, that's funny. It was like, you can only see some and I just like turn. Um, I have a lot. I don't know how many I have, but <sighs> I do have a lot. I need to like find some way to put it. Now that I have this shelf thing right here, I need to like put some effort into decorating it because 
I don't really know how to decorate it. I have this Lego bonsai tree. I think I'm gonna swap out the leaves for the cherry blossom leaves so they like match my stream room more. But I don't really know. I don't really know how I could decorate that thing. I should definitely, I feel like I just need, I mean, are plushies on a shelf weird? No, I feel like girls do that. We'll see. Um, I love hanging, oh, thank you, D Brox. Sunny D or high C ju juice box? I always like Sunny D. High C, I feel like is too, I don't know, not as good. Not as good. <laughs> you have to in Chicago? No, literally, it's freezing. But like, when I go out, I, I, I'm like the only one with a coat. <laughs> like, like a full on coat, like a real winter coat. But maybe I'm just a weenie head. <laughs> Did you watch it? Yes, I did. Oh my God. I finished Fellowship of the Ring and oh my God. Okay. Actually though, the end, the, it started to piss me off at the end a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I am not going to lie. Um, but okay. I mean, should I, should I rant about it? Do you guys want to hear my Fellowship of the Ring rant? I just feel like they're trying to make Aragorn's character seem way too cool and heroic and he ain't and like they're they're I feel like to a point where like they're impacting the story at certain times. And I get it, I get it. They're trying to make him into this cool mate. Like they want they want the crowd to think he's super cool or whatever. And I yeah, I don't know, I just the ending. It was the ending. And also Boromir. I feel like they did not flesh his character out enough. I also need Boromir and Aragon to switch actors because I'm sorry, but Aragon's actor looks like a freak. I can't, I can't. Like in the books, I imagined him to be like so handsome. Like he, he is sexy man, you know what I mean? And then, and then I watched the movies and I'm like, why is he like a little weirdo? Like they made him like a little weirdo. <laughs> In the, in the books, I mean. He was very heroic in the books, more shy in the films. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm not saying that he wasn't heroic, but, like, okay, here's here's my complaint. Here's my complaint. Okay, at the end, so, like, spoiler alert for F Fellowship of the Ring. So, at the end of the Fellowship of the Ring, you know how they, like, get to where the waterfalls are, and they're all having, like, in the books, they're, like, sitting around, they're having a debate. They're, like, okay, should we go with Boromir to his city, or should we go straight to Mordor? Some people are, like, going either way. Frodo is, like, I need to go decide alone. He goes off into the forest. Boromir follows him, and basically ends up like attacking him and trying to take the ring from him because the ring is like corrupting him and like in the books I feel like this was so shocking because like the whole time like I mean obviously he like wanted to bring the ring like there but like he wasn't being like evil like in the movies they made they like made it seem like he was inevitably going to ha going to have that happen but like in the books I felt I was like pretty surprised I was like oh my god what the fuck and then like because Frodo gets scared he just decides to run away he runs away Sam ends up finding him and he just ends up leaving with just Sam everyone else doesn't even know that happens they're like what the fuck like where where'd they go where'd Frodo go at first you know like they don't really know what's going on and then um <laughs> and then but like in the in the movie Aragorn runs into Frodo after he has this interaction with Boromir and there's this whole moment where like the ring is like whispering to Aragorn it's like Aragorn and Aragorn's like no Frodo you should run the ring is gonna tempt us and like makes Aragorn the one to tell Frodo to run and like there's a, and, and like I'm like okay first of all like they're trying to make it like I feel like that scene was what annoyed me because like they're trying to make it seem like Aragorn so much better than Boromir because he wasn't corrupted by the ring when like in the books like we don't know if that was, we don't know like you know, we don't know if he would have been able to resist it like that. Like, we don't really know. You know what I mean? And I feel like also like him telling Frodo to run like changes, changes that moment because like, it's like, cause in the, I don't know. I just feel like it changed the vibe of that scene and that freaking annoyed me. And yeah, that was, that was my, I think the ending scene was my biggest gripe. I feel like Boromir's betrayal wasn't as big of a deal. I feel like they had that whole moment with Aragorn to try to make him seem like he's the top dog when like he... You know, like, he was also lost in that moment. He was also lost, also confused. Like, he was also, you know... I feel like in the books, also, he was, like, so much more conflicted. Being like, oh my god, like, Gandalf died. Like, fuck. Like, I guess I have to step up, but, like, I'm not Gandalf. In the movies, he's like, he's like, I... He's like, he's like, I ain't Gandalf dead. Fuck that, motherfucker. Let's go. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I don't know. Like, they're trying to make him seem too cool. They're trying to make him seem too cool, too swaggy. Like, he got too much swag in the movies when I feel like he was a more interesting and dynamic character in the books 
Anywho, Kaizo, Kaizo, thank you so much for the sub with Prime. Um, happy 21 months. Thank you, thank you. You're getting close to two years. Woohoo. Um, hi, DJ. Um, oh, I was just in Chicago over the week and the weather was very, it was different every day. Oh my gosh. Well, what'd you think of Chicago if you were visiting? Uh, did I get any superpowers from getting electrocuted? Unfortunately not. Do you guys ever read Aragon the- <gasps> Yes! Oh my god, I fucking loved Aragon when I was a kid. My dad was actually the one who like introduced me to that book series, but yes, no, that book, those were some good books. Claire was actually talking to me about that book series the other day. She's like, oh, you ever read Aragon with like the dragon? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I don't know though. I have mixed feelings about rereading books because sometimes I feel like if I already, this is how I feel about rereading books, rewatching movies and stuff too, is like, if I already know what's gonna happen, I'm just thinking about that. Like, I'm just thinking about what's gonna happen. Like, I like, I feel like I need new stuff where I'm like completely shocked to my core when things are happening, you know? Um, oh my goodness. The film destroyed Aragorn. Air Aragorn? Wait, oh, oh wait. There was a movie? I feel, wait, I feel like I kind of do remember movies coming out about that. I don't remember them though, really. Um, get electricity again, surely, okay, yeah, I'll try again. I'll let you guys know how it goes. I'll tweet out about the results. <laughs> um, okay, from Claire's community, how wholesome are we here? I don't know, chat. All my, all my community members, how wholesome do you think we are here? I, I would probably say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I think, I would say I, maybe I'm not that wholesome. I mean, I'm definitely not as raunchy as I feel like some streamers are. Maybe I'll be like a solid, can I be like halfway? I don't know, what are you considering like not wholesome though is the thing. We like to have intellectual debates here. Um, chat. Oh, speaking of intellectual debates, um, I just, okay, I'm so late to the party. I already know, but I just started listening to the Freakonomics podcast because the podcast that I was listening to, even though they released five episodes a week, it wasn't enough. I spent too much time listening to podcasts, I guess. And I literally like have watched almost every single episode of the podcast I was listening to, or sorry, listened to almost every episode. So I was looking for a new podcast, stumbled upon Freakonomics, listened to one of his, um, like one of the episodes and it was like pretty good. So I, I decided to listen to this three part series that he had in the podcast talking about AI and stuff. And low-key, okay, I think now, but I just finished it, actually. I, I was listening to it as I was getting ready. Just finished it. And low-key, dude was, like, flaming, like, <laughs> okay, in the podcast. I think it was a guest host, so I don't think it was actually the main host guy that was doing this. But, so, like, it's about AI, right? And one of the times, they, like, bring on this computer science girl, and she, like, kind of... So basically AI, they're trying to make it do a bunch of stuff, right? So she was trying to see like, can we make an AI tell a joke, but not just a joke, a funny joke. And she was talking and like the interviewer guy was like, oh, like why, you know, what made you be interested in this like field of research? And she was like, oh, well, like I'm sure my fellow computer scientists can relate, but like, I'm really socially awkward. Like I don't really know how to like understand people. So I love to analyze people through data and yada 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 being like you know I'm a, I'm a socially awkward computer science girl I want to understand people and like I want to understand what makes people laugh and you know I wish I could I want to be funny too and like I thought this would be like a funny way to get into this and and then yeah and then like later on like towards the end of her like interview part he's like oh like can you read us some like jokes that your AI made and then she's like oh yeah like okay like these are some of the jokes that like I thought were really funny like I have a toddler so I felt like they were relatable and she like read off some of the jokes and like she obviously like thought the jokes were funny because like that's why she chose them to read and the guy was like <laughs> like after she read the jokes he was like oh okay so the AI failed so the AI failed at making funny jokes I was literally so funny. I was like uh like, is he being dead ass? Like, is he trying to clown on this girl right now? And so he was like, yeah, he was being like, oh, so like, obviously the AI failed at making funny jokes because those jokes weren't funny. And 
<laughs> and then, like, tra to transition to the next interviewer, he's like, okay, now we're going to interview someone who is actually funny. And they, like, transition to interview this other guy. And I was literally like, if I got invited to be on a podcast and they clowned me that bad... Oh my God, I'd be swinging. I'm I'm showing up to the place of production and I'm swinging because God damn, God damn. She would poor, poor home girl listening back to that, but also like hashtag relatable. I don't know if I consider myself a funny person, honestly. Oh, hey, what's the shocking news? <laughs> oh, cause I got electrocuted. Yeah, that's, that's the shocking news. Um, hello, Leo, hello. Um, but in regards to stream today, um, I'm not gonna be streaming for very long because I have my D&D thing later, so I was thinking, I mean, we can game. I was just like, should we do, because I've been wanting to get back into Baldur's Gate, but I feel like I like to do it by section, so I don't really want to play it if I'm, like, having to end stream at a certain time. Um, age or you don't say? I'm a grandma, I'm 23. Oh my God, I'm gonna be 24 soon. <laughs> I'm gonna be an old decrepit grandma. Um, You're playing D&D now, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> I literally joined this like random adventurers guild and now I'm a regular, but I had to miss last week because I uh, literally, yeah, cause, well, cause I was in the DR. So hopefully I can pop back up and I didn't miss out too much, <laughs> but yeah, it's in person. It's in person. <laughs> I really 20. Wait, what are we doing today? I was thinking that's what I was debating. Are we, I, I was thinking maybe we could do well, because OK, because it's at seven. So I and I usually like try to head over, like start heading over there at like 630. So I'll probably stream for like two, a little more than two more hours. And yeah, so I was like, do you think that's long enough to do like a whole area of Baldur's Gate? Or should I just, should we just do our last Pal World stream for a while? Because <laughs> I feel like once I go back to Baldur's Gate and then we have like Nightingale that I really want to play, I just feel like I don't know when I'm going to come back to Pal World. So maybe we can like, you know, we can end, end the Pal World obsession with one good stream. Um... Why well, you made friends? No, it was literally like this random adventurer's guild that anyone can show up and play. And you like pay $8. <laughs> it comes with a snack and a drink. <laughs> Power World hype died quick. I mean, I thought the game was really fun. I'm just like almost at end game. I'm, I'm like level 45 and the max level is level 50. I'm thinking like if we do do that, we should totally go to the big tree. Every single time I've asked someone like, oh my gosh, should we go to the big tree? Like while we're playing Power World, everyone's like, no. But now you can satiate the curiosity. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. People have different tastes and humor. Yeah. Oh, someone asked if like the jokes were funny. I did think the jokes were funny. Like when I, when I was chuckling, I was chuckling. I was laughing when she was reading the jokes. So homeboy was, homeboy was bullying her. That's what I think. Um, you have to pay. Yeah, well, cause it's not like a game store thing. But I mean, yeah, obviously like I like, don't know anyone that plays D&D so that's why I did this so I could meet people that do that <laughs> um 25 is so old I'm 25 it's okay hey no at least you get frontal lobe development I'm in like the in-between stage I should stop joking about 23 being old though because I feel like some people like do be taking that shit seriously you know I don't know man Let's see. I feel like you're not really old until you're like 65. That's old. <laughs> Harbinger, thank you for the tier one. I appreciate that. Happy 19 months. Have I had too much of a chance to tune in lately, miss? You hope you're doing fabulous. Oh, thank you. You know, I was like out of town last week, so I, to be fair, I wasn't streaming that much. Um, but trying to stream or getting back into the stream grind now. Um, but yeah, no worries. Life gets busy. I totally get that. I play D&D with my friends. Well, you're lucky, okay? Because none of my friends are into that shiz. I'm also just like trying to do things to meet more people. Like, I don't know, bro. Meeting, meeting people as an adult is hard as hell, okay? Like, 
I can totally see like I remember being in college and people asking me like oh my gosh like what's your advice for meeting people and I'm like oh like I don't know it's so easy to meet people in college blah 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 yeah now I'm one of those motherfuckers okay so I'm trying to do I'm trying to do things that make me meet people that have similar interests to me because I feel like that's the hardest part because like maybe meeting people is easy but I feel like meeting people that have similar interests to you that you also enjoy being around I feel like that's the hard part you know where is where do you usually meet people guys like where's where would you say is like the number one like thing that you do or just like whatever like how do you meet most and not, not just like meet people but like make friends with people um, if you haven't hit retirement yet, you're still thriving. Exactly. Um, hi. I'm doing good. How are you, Sis Sissel? Uh, no one prepares us for how different it gets once we leave college. I know. I definitely feel like adulthood is, like, so much more isolating and so much lonelier. Like, I miss being able to just, like, go downstairs and have a million people to hang out with, you know? And I feel like that's the thing that I've definitely missed the most about college. But that's the thing that everyone misses, you know what I mean? Like, the sense of community that you have in college. It's just so... I don't know. I find dating apps a great way to find friends. Actually, I've heard great things about Bumble friends. But, I mean, I don't know. If I can't even do... If I couldn't even do, like online dating i don't know how i could do like online friendship things like i don't know i feel like i always prefer to meet people in a more organic way i can't even i can't even make online friends guys like i i don't know i'm so bad at, i've never really had online friends or internet friends before and i just i don't know i've i feel like i'm just an i'm an in-person person and like this is probably the closest that i get to interacting with with like people via the internet in a way that feels authentic to me. But something about typing messages to people never feels like authentic communication to me. That's why I don't text. I don't, I've never really used dating apps or anything like that. Like, I don't know. I just feel like something about the typing message, like that just does not feel like real communication to me. It does not feel meaningful. Like I would much, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's also, like, just kind of boring. <laughs> you know? Like, I feel like a conversation with someone in real life is just so much more engaging and more just enjoyable for me. I don't know. Not a texter at all. Chat, when do you think it reaches a point of, like, it's more res disrespectful to respond to a text than it is to just keep... Like, like, you think, like, a month of an unopened text is, like, I don't even answer that shit anymore. Like, what's your, like, time threshold for an unresponded to message to, you know, time out of getting a response? Because <laughs> I was, like, okay, because I, like, sat down and responded to a bunch of texts yesterday. I was, like, okay, like, let me sit down and respond to some of this shit. And I was scrolling... And I literally, I was like, okay, once I reached December, I was like, I, I don't even know what to say to these people anymore. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how I can like, like, I feel like, like, I was like, I feel like it's almost more disrespectful to like, even try and respond to this at this point. God. What? I'd say three days, a week max. Oh, oh, hell no. Nah. Okay. Y'all tripping on that. A week is, is something slight. What? See, this is what scares me, though, is because I worry that people read very deeply into my lack of responses. People do read kind of deeply into my lack of responses. And it's just like, I just don't like to text. I don't like to text. I hate texting. I genuinely hate it so much. God, I mean, like, take me back. Take me back to the to the ye olden days because I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, if you don't bother keeping in contact in a week, delete them. What the fuck? Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I literally respond to my texts, like, once every couple of days, okay? So, me ignoring a text for a week is uh, probably a, is a very normal is very common. Are the responses to close friends and new people? All, all of them. All of the above. I just feel like, okay, ne like, it makes me feel like something is wrong with me. Like, 
I... It makes me feel like something's wrong with me, but whenever I really sit down and think about it, I'm like, no, nothing's wrong with me. Something's wrong with all of y'all. Something's wrong with all of y'all, okay? Like, how are you mentally sane? Like, you, someone can message you at any moment and you just feel like you have to insta respond like i don't know you're you're a victim you're being manipulated by your phone you have a phone addiction <laughs> like it should not be normal to have to constantly be talking to people all the time like you know like motherfuckers were writing letters to each other and had to wait wait weeks for their responses okay and now i'm crazy because i take like a few days to respond <laughs> um you have the good old days yeah take me back take me back to the to the snail mail days uh do you not group chat with your pals i mean i have group chats that i don't talk in <laughs> i'll like receive them messaging i'm like uh -huh, funny why is my lip gloss like leaking down do you guys see that okay sorry um it's more so like if I have time another person and I can respond, I will. I just feel like it just takes a lot mentally to for me to respond to people. I don't know. Like having conversations is easy, but like uh, texting is like, uh, it's like a chore. If I don't respond quickly, I probably don't want to talk to you. I don't get a lot of messages though. So I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't even, I mean, I guess I get messages. Who? I mean, I don't even know why I feel like I... It, to be fair, it is like a decent amount of group chat. It's just like a lot of people, like different people from different times of my life. And, oh lordy, oh lordy. I can't, once I start scrolling back too far on my text and I'm seeing like the texts that I haven't answered in a while, I... I just literally cannot live like this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I cannot because y'all know how, because I always say, I'm like, I'll finally sit down, respond to all those texts and then they'll respond right back and then I'm exactly where I used to be. Like, am I literally just supposed to be on my phone constantly? Constantly texting people? Is that what's supposed to be going on? Like, I'm just supposed to, every time I feel my phone buzz, I take it out and I have to respond immediately and then I put it back away. Because I'm not gonna lie, I fucking hate people like that. <laughs> I can't, no, but like, for real, like, I hate when I'm with someone and they are taking out their phone all the time. Like, all the time. Like, if I hang out with you and I see you pick up your phone, like, more than 10 times, you lucky if we hanging out again. Like, I just, I just feel like I go on my phone when I have things that I need to do and then I turn it off when I'm done. Like the fact, like I feel like it's very rare for my phone to buzz and me pick it up. But I feel like that is the expectation. That is like the expectation is that like you, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do about this because because I also like don't want people to think that I don't like them or something because I'm taking a long time to text them back like it's just like no like I just hate texting but no matter how much you tell people that some people still take it so personally and I'm just like oh my god this is why this is why I feel like I I don't know man um I have like five good friends anywhere people contact me it's either work or casual yeah, I mean, I just feel like I have a, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, wait, you don't reply for days or weeks? Yeah. Yeah, just like 30 minutes in a day to reply to messages, etc. I mean, that's like a decent amount of time per day. But even then it's like you respond you text someone back and then like they like it's supposed to be a conversation back and forth It's not supposed to be like I respond once and then it's done You know, how do you communicate to friends with your phone off? Like I just feel like if I want to talk to my friends, I'll just like Reach out to them and be like hey, I miss you. Like let's have a call soon 
or like, you know, like let's FaceTime soon. And then I'll FaceTime them and then I'll catch up with them about my life and then I'll be like, okay, cool, love you, bestie. And then that's it. Like that's how I, that's how I like to maintain my friendships. Just random occasional FaceTimes or calls or we talk and like, you know, maybe we're doing other things. Like my friend Lauren, like that's, we keep up cause she like sometimes she has like a longer commute to like work. And so usually it'll line up in a way that like I'll call her while I'm like cooking something and she's like commuting home or whatever it is. And like, that's how we keep up. And like, I just like that way so much better. Cause like sometimes I'm texting Lauren, I'll be texting Lauren and like, I'm just like, oh, like I don't really know what to say or something like that. And, but then it's like the minute that I'm talking to her on the phone, like I have a million things to say. Like that's just how I am. It's like, I feel like over text it's, I'm always like, I don't know what to say like I don't even know like I don't even know what to say that's always my problem is also like I want to respond these texts but like sometimes I don't even know what to say like it's like via text my brain is smooth I have smooth brain but then the minute that I'm talking to someone in person I have a million things to fucking say <laughs> insta responders are the opposite side of the extreme there there's a happy medium lol I guess. I have notifications completely disabled, so I'll check messages eventually. <laughs> no cap. Texting was so 2023. I just feel like it's just a little psychotic that I'm supposed to just kind of be at everyone's beck and call. <laughs> and that people will get upset if I am not. Uh, text for not conversation. Text for plans to meet up for a conversation. Yes, that's how I feel. But unfortunately, I do not feel like most people are that way. But... She schedules a team meeting with them. No, I'm literally like, I literally just want to be like, just book time on my calendar if you want to talk to me. <laughs> Texting is just so like, like it's just not engaging also for me. I don't know. Um, But I will say I did use, I used to be such a texter. Like I feel like that me in high school, I was like texting people constantly all the time. I don't know how I lived like that. And then the pandemic happened. <laughs> like, I honestly feel like until the pandemic happened, I would, I myself was a nonstop texter. I would be texting my homies like every day throughout, throughout the entire day. And that kind of baffles me now because it's like, how was I even having that much shit to talk about? But I guess when you're in high school, it's like shit, there's always, there's always something to talk about, right? Like there's always crazy drama or like, oh my God, did you hear about so-and-so? Or like, oh, who are you bringing to homecoming? Like, I don't know. I think that school kind of gives you a lot of things to talk about. Same with like college. There was a lot of things to talk about. Like after the pandemic happened, I'm just like, what do I have? Like what? what do I talk about? What do y'all talk about? Okay. All of y'all that are texting people every single day, multiple times a day. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> That's what I need to know. Give me the tips. Now, now I'm asking, I'm asking y'all for the tip, for the tips. Um, who are the people texting you that you don't reply today? Strangers, hookups, work colleagues, everyone. There is no like one category of people that I take forever. It's like literally everyone. It could be like my best friend in the whole wide world and I will still take days to respond. <laughs> it could literally be like, you know, the love of my life and the object of all my desires and I'm st they still <laughs> like, like when I say it's like, that's why I tell people like not to take it personally because it's like, it doesn't matter who you are. Like it, how I feel about you does not influence. Like, first of all, if I, like, yeah, like, I don't know how I feel about you does not influence how fast I text you back. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, if I see that the text is urgent, I will like respond faster, but sometimes I'm just like, <laughs> do I have to get with her mom? No. Yeah. At least my mom, my mom doesn't take it personally. She'll just like be spamming me hella texts. Um, do, 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 do. The pandemic, <laughs> bad texts are good chatter. Exactly. I'm just an in-person person. That's, that's what I am. But I think I, I do think I want to become a good texter because now that I'm really thinking about it, like I feel like I had so many homies when I was in school because I was like texting people all the time. Why do I feel awkward now though, when I'm texting people? Like, I think that's really the root cause of the problem is that like, I just, I just feel so much more awkward over text. And I think part of that is because I feel like when I'm talking in person, like you guys, I mean, I'm a streamer. Okay. Y'all know me. Like, I feel like I use my hands. I use my facial expressions. Like I use my tone to kind of like indicate things versus I feel like I cannot convey any of that over text. It's just purely 
the words and vice versa i cannot get any of that from the other person so it's also just the words so if i'm not like texting about something important it's just like i don't even know what to say like i don't know man uh, um she's coming around she humble braggy she was super popular in high school no okay i was not super popular i just had a lot of different kinds of friends like because one thing okay because let's be real y'all see the way that i am okay i love talking to every i i just i'm a chatty person i'm a friendly person i feel like having having friends it does not necessarily mean you're popular like being popular is to be known you know what i mean like to be known i almost feel like the popular people were like not friends with everyone you know what i mean like they thought they were too good for everyone like <laughs> me i love to i'll yeah i'll yap to anyone that's gonna listen like i feel like also i feel like because i was like in my more my honors classes i will humble brag. i was a i was a smart cookie when i was in school okay and so i feel like i was like around like nerdier quieter people and those are my favorite kinds of people like <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite kinds of people because I talk and like they're usually more quiet usually I like I like also like getting people to come out of their shells like I always feel like I was friends with those people I also did like a million sports when I was in high school I did volleyball softball cheer track swim dive and so I knew people in all of those sports um I also like did a play once upon a time that's kind of how I got in with the theater kids although actually I did take French and for whatever reason a lot of theater kids take French so that's kind of also how I semi became friends with some theater kids i feel like i was like friends with a lot of different kinds of people in high school but i don't know i never really felt like i had like a close knit group of friends because i moved to because i like moved to my like small cornfield town like the summer before my freshman year of high school and so you know if you ever moved somewhere like it was so weird because it was like everyone was already friends with each other and like knew each other and so like when i moved i was like basically i was hell-bent on making friends and like that's what i kind of did like i feel like i feel like making friends if you're like intentional about making friends i feel like it's a lot easier to like you know what i mean like i feel like i had friends because i tried to make friends and i was friendly and i was like non-discriminatory about who i wanted to be friends with like i'm down to be friends with anyone as long as you're like a nice fun person and so yeah i don't know um that was kind of that's kind of the vibe um maybe it's extra burn you you just need the in-person interaction for energy no definitely i think it is honestly i feel like you're right um you know, I was a diver 15 years. Yeah, I did dive for like two years. I want to say I was so bad though. I'm not going to lie. So <laughs> I was just doing all these sports for, for vibes, for friends, honestly, for friends. I just wanted somewhere where I could get some exercise in and I'm making homies. That's literally the reason I did sports. Um, I was a skater kid, but I enjoyed my engineering nerds and art kids. A Yeah, I feel like I was like never really in like one kind of group or category, which, you know, even though like that sounds like, oh my God, you had all these friends. You're so cool. Like I did feel like I was like, I felt a little lonely. I felt a little bit of like an outsider at times, especially considering, like I said, most of the people at my high school, like they all grew up together and like all had like these childhood memories together that I wasn't a part of. And so sometimes I do feel like being in like one set group of friends can like be just as rewarding as like having all these random kind of friendships. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was me. I feel like, I feel like I did ultimately end up like finding like good friendships and close friendships, but never like a very, a super secure friend group like that's always that was always my my dream but like now luckily i feel like i do kind of have that with like my california friends but they all live in california and i don't so so i'm still a loser at the end of the day basically <laughs> um texas having one of the bigs wait i kind of did see something about that the wildfires yeah no Heart, hopes and hopes and prayers my college graduate i am a college graduate Guys, okay, wait, actually, I need to talk about something. I need to talk about something. Um, I, I miss school. <laughs> I miss school so much. And I've been thinking so much lately, like, um, take me back. <laughs> take me back. I'm like, damn, like, 
should I go get my MBA? Like, I don't know. I'm like, I just want to go back to school. Like, I want, like, I miss, I miss school. And, like, what's been making me, like, because uh, I've, like, talked about this here and there on stream before. But I feel like what really was making me feel this way was when I was listening to the Freakonomics podcast that I told you guys about. And I was listening to the AI stuff. And it was, like, so interesting to me. I literally started taking notes when I was listening to this podcast because I was like, oh, my God, like, this is so interesting. Like, I want to make sure I remember this. And then it, it just, like, reminded me, like, how much I loved my major, how much I loved studying what I studied in school and like how much I just like love learning like I just love learning and I just and also like you know what we were talking about earlier about like how it's so easy to meet people and like make friends when you're in school and stuff and I was just like I don't know now I'm just kind of like oh like like should I go back but like even if I went back like what the fuck like what do I do like what should I study like like also it's like I I, I literally Man, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm conflicted. I mean, honestly, like, actually, if there's anybody in chat, like, I wanted to ask you guys and, like, you know, hear what your guys' thoughts. I feel like you guys are pretty, we got some smart cookies in chat. Um, I feel like I want to do something in my life that, well, okay, because also when I was listening to this podcast and I was learning all this stuff, it made me realize how much I was, like, how much passive knowledge I was getting at my job. So, like, when I was working at my job, like, I'd always have to, like, sit into these, like, you know, cyber calls, like, all hands cyber calls. And, like, I'd always be like, oh, like, this is, like, annoying. I have to sit in these calls. Like, let me just, like, do my, I, I need to be doing my client work. Like, fuck, I have to do these stupid calls. Whatever. I'd just be sitting in them. And, like, usually I just, like, listen to them as I'm, like, cleaning or cooking or, you know, like, I'm sure everyone at their job, like, has stupid ass calls that they have to listen to that like you know a ton of people go to but those calls were all were a lot about like ai and like new things happening in the tech and cyberspace and like i was like passively acquiring a lot of knowledge and when i was listening to my podcast i was like oh like i don't really feel like i'm feeding my brain in that kind of way anymore and like luckily i'm like i'm glad that i'm listening to this podcast again like i still feel like i try and like search for like i still try to learn a lot in my daily life but i'm like ugh, something about just like the multitude of knowledge and like the way that you can like really dive into concepts in school I feel like was just so I don't know it was like always something that I feel like I loved and I miss I miss a lot um apply for a master's program okay yeah so wait if I went to more schooling would I get should I get like my MBA <laughs> PhD time I was doing research into like PhD if I should get a PhD and I was like I don't know like I don't know if I should because I guess it's, a, it's like a lot of research you're having to like prove your dissertation and all this stuff and I don't know if I like feel and I'm pretty sure you have to get you you're supposed to get your master's before you get a PhD anyways so I feel like I would need to have something more specific in mind uh I would need to have some kind of you know you know something something more specific in mind if I was pursuing a PhD. I need more education for that, TLDR. Um, do, do, do. Bro, don't go to school, it's just cope to delay adulting. Okay, I'm already, I already am adulting, so what are you talking about? Learning is fun. Corporate life takes the fun out of, out of it all. I know. Philosophy is a very fun major. Bro, I loved the philosophy class that I took in college. I would totally go and study like some kind of philosophy, but I feel like if I would go that route, I might as well just like go get my law degree or something. Cause isn't like a lot of law uh, philosophy. MBA is not worth the tuition. Uh, yeah, I know. I like kind of hear mixed things. I, I mean, the reason why I, I, I never even plan on getting my MBA is cause I hear a lot of times that it's not worth it. But let's keep in mind, I'm not, I wouldn't be going to school like for a job. I'm going for fun. <laughs> gotchas thank you for the tier one happy three months thank you thank you thank you heart Bing. um do, 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 do. masters is a different vibe though lots of self-learning and research unless you do a management degree that incorporates group work oh i see masters first of course phd comment was for was for career student honestly i totally would get my phd i feel oh my gosh yeah <sighs> I just feel like I want to do something tech related. I, I need to do something tech related in my life because it's something that I'm interested in. It's something that's important in our world. It's something that I have a formal education in already. And I just feel like I don't want to let that part of me like just 
you know, die off, kind of. And I'm like, so how can I, how can I, hmm, what can I do? I was like, I was like, okay, I can either, here's the two options, guys, okay? I can either go back to school or start a business. <laughs> Both are gonna kind of cost money and time. <laughs> Those are kind of like the two that I'm like, <laughs> That's the, I don't know though. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, you'd make a sexy lawyer. Ooh, is being a lawyer a lot of work? Like, can I just go get my law degree and like do some lawyer shit on the side? Like, I don't want to have to like, you know, go full on with that. Like, can I just like go casually become a lawyer? Is that a thing? Um, why would you want to bend the knee to a professor with all the homework? Because I hope because if the professor is worthy, then why the fuck not? I've learned so much from my professors, and that's the great thing about going to a good school, is all your professors, they are cool as shit, and they got the shit to back up why they should be teaching their subject. Every single one of the professors I had in college had real, had worked in the field that they were teaching, and yeah. And I feel like that's something where it's like, I'm always, I'm always willing to learn from those more experienced and more knowledgeable than me. You know what I mean? And that's the best way to learn because I've tried to learn things like watching videos and shit like that. And it just doesn't really click in my brain as well as like a traditional classroom setting where someone who is well versed in the knowledge is teaching it to you and you can ask them questions and they are giving you exercises to help you practice and then being able to give you feedback on those exercises so you can do better. Like, I just feel like my brain is just so... Because I feel like since college, I have tried to learn things outside of it. And just kind of continue learning. Can keep my brain active, you know? And I have not liked any of those methods of learning as much as, like, the traditional school setting. And I don't know. I think that's just the way that I learn. Like, I just feel like everyone learns in different ways. And, like, I just do really like the traditional school setting the most as far as, like, learning things. Because I know I can just go out and learn things on YouTube or whatever. But, like, I just don't like that. I don't like that. Never learned anything I didn't know from school. Should go to a better school then. <laughs> um... I don't know. Sorry. I actually don't. I don't know what to say to that. I feel like I've gained lots of valuable, amazing, interesting, useful knowledge from school. Um, I know this doesn't help the combo, but I could see you running a small business, like your own tech company. Yes. Like, I feel like I do feel like I do want to one day have like some kind of company or something like that. Um, what type of business? Now that's the question, right? I think it would be cool if I could like learn how to build an app and I could like build some kind of app or something like that. I don't really have like the technical know-how for that, but can I do AI? <laughs> like, let me do some AI or something. I was looking at about buying business. <laughs> about buying a business. I was looking at buying a tutoring business. <laughs> Should I buy a tutoring business, guys? Uh, law is a lot of work unless you do real estate. That's just grind and hustle. Ugh, I don't want to do real estate. No, if I did law, I would want to do like technology law. Do you do better with structure? Do you know how to learn on your own? There are a ton of free resources online to learn about AI machine learning. Yeah, I know, but I like, I like, uh, I like in-person learning. I like learning from someone that I, you know, no, respect, I know is knowledgeable. But yeah, I don't like learning online. Like that's why I hated Zoom University because I like being able to ask questions. I like being able to ask questions. I like, I like being able to get active feedback on like the practices, like, you know, you know, homework, for example. That's like literally active feedback specifically towards you. And like online learning is one-sided. That's what I don't like about it. It's like, I can watch a YouTube video about something, but I can't really ask them questions. I can't like try it myself and then show them and then ask them how I did. And like those are, that's the most important thing to, for me is like that level of interaction is like, that's what really helps me like learn things, especially like more difficult subjects. Um, to your turn, trying to go back to school, funsies, I low-key miss it. Oh my gosh, no, literally me too. Wait, what did you, what did you study in school, McDoodle? Oh, I don't know if I ever, I don't think I ever asked you this. Yeah, like, what was, like, your major? Like, what did you study? Um, college is amazing for the college experience. Yeah, no, I mean, I loved it all. I'm not gonna lie, I loved it all. I think I got a great college experience, had tons of fun, and I also got a great education, and yeah. Highly recommend um, did you go to office hours as a student? Nah, because I was never struggling. 
Sorry, that was so... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I'm not, but I didn't really go to office hours because honestly, I do feel like if you just pay attention in class and you just like engage in class, then like, I you, I don't know, you shouldn't really need to go to office hours. But it depends on how big the class is, again, because I guess if it's like a huge lecture and you can't really have that one-on-one -on -one time with a teacher, then office hours can be very helpful for that music okay i thought i thought it might be that i double major in music performance and music education oh but i'm so interested in music business now i'm like hmm. also teaching is a lot yeah no i bet i feel like i have some friends that do teaching and they yeah say the same thing it's a lot um but yeah oh my god music business wait that's so interesting like what aspect of music business do you think that you would want to like pursue academically um dod job protect america wait what's dod sorry my brain does not work well with acronyms you can also try joining societies clubs or programs take on tech initiatives through there although i think members there t are typically are employed <sighs> yeah no i was thinking about that too i was like i'm sure maybe there's like some kind of some way that I can still be involved in these spaces. Like, oh man, I don't know, guys. I feel like I need to, I just, I wanna have something that I can like use my academic brain towards. Because I feel like I, I mean, yeah, obviously I feel like I apply my like business background to streaming and content creation, but I mean, I feel like I want, like, I don't know, I guess I could probably do that more more so but that's like more like business business like i want to be like within the business side of tech more so i don't know man i don't really know i don't know so <laughs> i think i should just i mean should i Maybe I really just should. Oh, okay, but I've tried to learn how to build an app so many times in the past and I can't, I can't because I'm fucking doing it like watching videos and tutorials and trying to do my research and I can't learn that way. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm like, put me in a classroom, put me in a classroom, please, with a notebook and a teacher, and I will learn so well, I promise. But I also just hate coding. Oh my god, that's my biggest issue. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Anywho, sorry, I'm, I am having a very big mental debate about my life, okay? <sighs> What are your thoughts on Bridget Mendler? Oh my god, bro, she's everything she, she's everything I wish I could be that's my thoughts is i if i could like switch lives with anyone bridget medler disney pop star yeah she she had her acting career she made some banger music she i'm pretty sure she went to what i thought it was mit law or something i thought she had some kind of law then she went to harvard doesn't she have her like phd now now she's a ceo of her own company the fuck what cheat code she got what cheat code she got for real mm. Like, how old even is she? She has a child. Like, she adopted a child. Why is she doing all this? The fuck? You best believe if I'm, if I, you know, I'm getting my Harvard degree and I'm also like a CEO, like, I'm, I'm gonna be stressing if I also have a child to take care of. What the fuck? <sighs> Man. <laughs> Play a strategy game. I recommend StarCraft 2. Department of Defense. Oh. Go to a better school or be a better student. <laughs> We're gonna make your hair look good today. Thank you. Um, want want to make an app that hates coding? That checks. Yeah. See, I want to no because it's like I want to do everything else. I will think of the idea. I will think of the UI. I will think of the branding, the marketing. I will be responsible for everything else. I just need some little tech, some little tech motherfucker to to build the actual app for me. <laughs> like I will, I would do every. Thing else everything else um yeah 
I just need like a little, a little coding pro to just kind of, you know, they don't have to have any thoughts really <laughs> besides coding. They can, they don't have to contribute in any other way. They can just be like code, beep, boop, beep, boop. <laughs> Sorry, that's, sometimes that's what I think of computer scientists. I'm like, they're just like code, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. <laughs> no, but for real, they're stronger than me because I mean, obviously I, I like took coding classes when I was in college and they, I just, I hate it. It's just so nitty gritty. It's so, it's so detail oriented. It's so precise. Like I've always been like a big picture person. I, I like looking at the big picture of things. I don't like the nitty gritty. That's why I always liked, I always liked biology and like physics, but I hated chemistry. It's just cause I'm just reached a point where I'm like, oh my God. Like, oh my God. <laughs> there are no code options if your app isn't complex. I mean, I would definitely start off with a non-complex app. What are the non, what are the node code? Okay, actually, if we got any like actual CS people in chat, I wanna learn how to build an app. What are recommendations? Are there particular languages? that I should, I mean, when I was, when I was doing my research, they were saying Xcode was the way to go. Xcode, I literally, that was part of the reason why I got my MacBook was so that I could code on Xcode. And then I was trying to learn Xcode and giving myself a mental breakdown. So I gave up because I literally could not do it. <laughs> um html css javascript bro why not python okay i feel like i did all this pi i learned all this python what the fuck is python for okay and why can't i use python because that's the language that i'm most that i'm the most experiment experienced in <laughs> python's the easiest language nowadays and you can make apps with it wait you can python's mostly for back-end databases oh learn swift you can make iphone apps without having to code as much swift Xcode is for iOS apps only. So should I do Swift? Kotlin slash Java. Honestly, no offense, but I'm not going to be focusing on the Android people <laughs> for now. I have an iPhone. Most people I know have an iPhone. So if it's between iOS or Android, I'm sorry. I'm choosing iOS. Um, <laughs> Python is mostly for data analysis and automation. Damn. That's probably why they had me learning it as a business major, though. Makes sense. A lot of people that, like, you know did my major which was information systems a lot of people go into data analysis so i guess that makes sense why they were drilling so much python into us curly b thank you for the tier one thank you thank you Mwah. heart 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 happy four months Ding. um you actually build an app as you're learning other languages you got to learn it first before you build anything damn i can't do like See, I just, okay, well, I just feel like I need to find like a CS homie and then just have them teach it to me. Because I, like I said, I cannot learn online. I don't want to teach myself anything. I like to be taught. Is that really that crazy though? Like, I don't feel like, like I, I feel like most people could not learn something on their own, something complex right like I, I don't i can't i have a hard time believing that most people can like just watch videos and like learn a complex skill from that because i don't like you know like i feel like most people would learn something so much better if they were being taught by somebody you know but like every, that's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but maybe, is that me? Like, once you learn a language, it becomes somewhat easier to learn other languages. Well, I have like beginner level knowledge in some languages. Uh, depends on how determined you are. So many resources available. It's not even like about determination or not though. It's about like, it's literally about me not being able to ask questions. That's literally what it is, which to me, that is such an important and integral part of learning something is asking questions. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's why it's cause like, I'm like trying to, I, I've like watched videos and try to learn these things, but I can't ask fucking questions. I need to be able to be like, 
why are they doing this this way? Or why, you know what I mean? Like I need to be able to have that back and forth that I feel like is what really solidifies the knowledge for me. You know, like I, I need to be able to ask questions. I need to be able to be an active person in the teaching process and what is being taught to me. I need to be an active part of that. You know what I mean? Like, and I also want to be able to like do something myself and then be able to like, you know, give it to this other, per the other person for feedback. I feel like being able to ask questions and being able to receive feedback is, those are two things that are so important to my learning process. And that is why I cannot learn things from just watching videos. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, then a general thing, like are other people, okay. Let me give a poll because like, Y'all are making me feel like I'm fucking stupid. Do you think you, or let's, let's be more. Have you ever taught yourself a complex skill from online videos? Yes or no? I'm just gonna say online. I'm just gonna say by yourself. What do you mean complex? We're gonna we're gonna say it's as difficult as learning how to code. That's literally it has to be that difficulty. Okay, we're not talking about something that you can watch. Like we, I learn plenty of things online. Okay, but we're not talking about like learning about a subject either, because I feel like I can learn about a subject online pretty easily. We're talking about a skill. We're talking about where you're learning something and then you are creating something with that skill. And then you can do it amazingly. Complex as in, as in a technical skill. Yeah, or it could even be something like, I don't know, it could be an artistic skill. I feel like maybe like, you know, painting or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good, if that's a good comparison, <laughs> but like, maybe like, I don't know, but I guess like a, a co yeah. Cause it's, I mean, like, I feel like I can learn about subjects online, but I feel like learning a skill is, is different because that requires you to not just have the knowledge, but to be able to apply that knowledge in a bunch of different settings and like use it to create things. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, some of you in here though are questioning <laughs> what? Um, everyone here graduated. Okay, wait, everyone's saying yes, but like, I think you guys are liars. What skill did you teach yourself? Everyone that voted yes, what skill did you teach yourself online? Let's hear it. Let's hear it guys, I'm waiting. Literally coding. <laughs> Hacking, woodworking, honestly valid. I'm a self-taught swimmer. Nah, no count. Programming, okay, everyone's saying coding. What the fuck? Okay, so, so I am fucking stupid. So that's what you guys are saying. <laughs> I can't. I'm passing away. Y'all murdered me. HTML was pretty easy. HTML was easy, I will say. I did, I learned how to HTML code when I was 12 for my One Direction Tumblr blog. <laughs> Bro, I was literally in middle school teaching myself how to HTML code so that I could customize my Tumblr blog. I remember I made this like mouse where like whenever you move your mouse on the screen, there would be like a little cat that would chase it. And I was so proud of myself for that. <laughs> Oh, TBT, TBT to the, to the, the olden days of the internet. <laughs> Bring that back, honestly. Bring back being able to code the hell out of your social media profiles to be however the fuck you want it to be. Not as stupid, your expectations are wrong. Expect to take a long time to learn little things and it builds over time. I mean, I'm not expecting to like insta learn these things. No, oh, everyone learns differently. Some are more willing for trial and error after observation. Yeah, see, I'm not really just a trial and error person of like, just go get, I'm not a hands-on learner, I think is also like, I like to be taught concepts 
I don't know. I mean, I can be a hands-on learner, maybe. I don't know, man. Ugh. Ugh. I think I just need to find someone that's like a pro at coding and then team up with them and we'll make the app together. That's what I think. Um, you're always going to learn best doing something you're passionate about. Yeah, I think that's the issue too is I just like don't really like coding. I hate coding. I do not enjoy coding. <laughs> uh, that was like my least favorite part of my major. I'm just such a concept person. I like to talk about, I like to talk about ideas and I don't know. <laughs> um, not giving yourself learning. Wait, what? Uh, it's harder if you're trying to learn something when you don't know what you want to do with it. I mean, I do know what I want to do with it. We'll see. Maybe that's the root of the problem is I hate coding. Maybe that's why I'm struggling so much to learn it. It's just because I keep thinking, I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> God. At the end of the day, though, I've been hearing, I, I've been hearing things, though. I've been hearing things about how coding, coding ain't a great career path to pursue nowadays. Anyone else been hearing this? I saw a TikTok that was like CS majors back then and it was like literally like last year like they were so cool everyone thought CS majors were so cool you're gonna be so rich and then now it's like hard as hell for them to get jobs and stuff anyone else been seeing that I mean obviously tech layoffs have been happening for a fat minute uh Facebook sort of killed those old sites with flashy stuff they went minimal and everyone moved to that so sites followed their example lame lame coding Layoffs are wild right now. See, that's what I need to do is I just need to go out and find some like laid off coding pro and be like, hey, wanna build a, wanna build an app together? <laughs> I'll just sit waiting, waiting for one of those to stumble upon my path. Oh, Google just laid you off. That's terrible. Let's, I can help you out with something that'll really boost your resume. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly, wait, new idea. <laughs> new idea. Um types of coding jobs will change. Okay. Yeah, no, you know, you're right. Well, I, I obviously do think that AI is a factor, but I mean I don't know because I wasn't I would, I'm not a software engineer, so I don't actually know. If, if anyone else is a software engineer, feel free to give us insight into these layoffs. Um, so I just laid off 900 people. Yeah, I feel like there have been a crazy amount of layoffs all over the place. Eventually, I think you'll need to have more subject matter knowledge and not only the ability to write code, or you need to be able to write like PhD math level code. Valid. Valid. Um, they killed their entire UK gaming studio. What? wait why i doubt you can afford to hire laid off engineers okay but i'm not trying to hire them i'm trying to give them something to do with their newfound free time <laughs> i'm just kidding they can get paid in ownership i'm just kidding um most people good at coding are not getting laid off at tech companies is the people with soft skills getting fired I don't, I don't know if that's, maybe, maybe it's more like a freezing hire for CS people, but I've been hearing things that it is hard to get a job with a CS degree right now. So maybe it's just like, I don't know, maybe they're not hiring as much. Sounds like, <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking. Uh, most people get a coding or, oh, I already read that. Do you have, do you want a random app or do you have something in mind? Oh, I have something in mind, but I'm not gonna oust my business ideas to you guys because someone will steal them. Mass layoff is normal now because many companies overhired during COVID. I just got a job offer after nearly a whole year. LOL, yeah, it's rough. Yeah, no, that's what I've been hearing. Ugh, I honestly hated coding too when I first learned in college. For some reason, they changed later on, really. Maybe if I learned like a different kind of language or something like that, I might be able to enjoy it, but I don't know. I just feel like I'm the idea person. Like I said, if I ever like built an app or something, I would literally do everything else besides like actually building the app, like everything else to make the app successful. Cause there's a lot that goes into that, you know, to have a successful app. You guys would download it, right? Like, okay guys, if I made a free app, you would download it to support, right? Please tell me yes. 
<laughs> because part of my marketing strategy is to hope that some of my community uh, enjoys would 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 use my app. No, you don't do you honestly, honestly, you don't have to use it. Just just at least give me that download, you know. <sighs> um. <sighs> Now I'm really thinking. Now y'all really got me thinking. I need to do, can I like do something? Can I just like go to an app building boot camp? I'm gonna fucking Google this shit. Cause again, I'm not, yeah. App building boot camp, Chicago. Software development boot camp provides a 400 hour curriculum that okay wait hold up ios development classes ten thousand dollars you got me fucked up i'm sorry you got you got me so fucked up right now university of chicago is is that a good school for uh software development Software development boot camp, seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars. Bruh, how long is this? Oh wait, hold on. My mom sent me flowers for my birthday. And they're coming up right now. Yay! I wonder if there'll be a note. She, she texted me earlier that she was gonna be sending that to me. Um, sorry, my brain my brain farted. Um, <laughs> I mean, for bootcamp, you can ask ChatGPT. I tried to do that though, and it kept giving me wrong stuff. Anyone else? I tried to, I tried to have ChatGPT code some shit for me, and it was like not working at all. And then I didn't know how to code, so I couldn't even, like, tell what was, like, not working. <laughs> um, what industry are you looking into for software development? I just want to know how to build an app. Like, I just want to know how to build a super fucking basic-ass app, okay? Like, that's that's literally... Like, I... I don't know why, but, like, I... <laughs> Y'all about to flame the hell out of me. I just don't feel like it should be hard to build an app. Like, I just feel like we need to have AI hurry on up and make it so anyone can build an app. And, like, I just want to be able to, like, like, I want it to be, like, Canva, almost. Where it's, like, I, I'm, like, you know, I, maybe I make a box here. And then I'm, like, okay, if someone taps on this box, I want them to be taken to this new page. Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, I want it to be like that. I don't want it to be, like, me coding. Because if it was, like, I can, like... You know, I can like type, oh, like it should say this right here. Okay, oh, like if they, you know, I want them to be able to, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like there should be some kind of app building interface that's like that. That's literally like that. Like, is there? I feel like anything that I even like looked into that is kind of like that though, is like super limited. Like they have like templates that you can use basically. Maybe that's what I need to build. <laughs> I'm gonna build an AI model. Oh, it's here. Coming! my mom that I got this. <laughs> oh my god.
gosh. My mom's like, oh, like, do you have a vase? Like, do you have a vase? Yes, mom, I have a vase. These are not fitting in there. These are not fitting in any of the vases that I own. What the? I mean, they smell so good. I can't even believe these are real, though. They, like, look fake. Like, they look... They look like a sunset with, like, the yellow and the pink. Here, let me, let me let you guys get a close-up. Like, it's, like, sunset vibes. Oh, my gosh. That's a whole garden. Yeah, this is literally, like, like this is cute. Like, compared to me. <laughs> These are from my mom. She sent them for my birthday. I just texted her so that she can come into stream and see them. I'm waiting for her to text back. I'm gonna hold them until my mom texts me back so that she can she can see what they, cause she was like, I don't know what they're gonna look like. And I'm like, oh, you're not gonna like, you know, tell, I don't know. So hold those flowers for the rest of the stream. It's great B-Day content. I know, I'm so happy. I'm actually, I don't even know how I'm gonna be able to fit these in any kind of vase. I'm not gonna lie. Chat, what do I do? What do I do? I don't want them to die. They smell so good. They look like GMO flowers bred to be humongous. <laughs> um, can you mention Luna flowers, my mom says. Luna flowers, thank you. She did an amazing job. Yes, she did, mom. Thanks, mom. Okay, guys, my mom is in chat. Everyone say thank you, Mama May, for the flower. Oh, well, I guess you guys didn't get anything, but... Yay! Thanks, Mom! <laughs> okay, I don't know what I should do to make sure that they... I think, I think I'm gonna have to deal with these after stream. <laughs> should I, like, move my mic out of the way? Thanks, Mom! <laughs> Here, let me move my mic out of the way a little bit. Great color choice. Yes, I know. I feel like it's so me. It's so pretty. I love. Wow, this is easily the biggest bouquet of flowers I've ever gotten in my entire life. Like, <laughs> I always see those like videos of like girls holding those huge bouquet bouquets or whatever. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty though. I'm scared they're gonna die. Should I go put them in water right now or do you think it's okay if I wait like an hour? Cause I'm probably only gonna stream for like an hour longer. Chat, what do you guys think? Cause I, I wanna be able to like, you know, fully focus on it. Like I feel like if I try to do it right now, I'm, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, Luna, power of the moon. They, they were flowers, ooh. Um, they ma match your salt rock lamp. Ooh, good note. Well, I mean, I mean, I guess kind of. <laughs> um, goes with the color of the room. I know, it's so pretty. I'm so excited. They're like huge though. This is crazy. Now I'm like, should I put them somewhere? Hold up. Hold up. I No! I want them to be more like... like them hanging off the ledge like that. <laughs> it look don't they literally look fake? Like they I feel like they don't even look real. <laughs> they are though. They are. Um uh, maybe put them in water now. I literally can't. Like I'm going to have to take apart the bouquet and like put them in multiple vases because do you see do you see how huge it was? Like if it was smaller, I'd be able to just whoa. What did I just do? If it was smaller, I'd be able to just um, throw them in a vase, but it's gonna take some, it's gonna take some freaking surgery to get these things into a vase. Can you put them in a bucket? I do not have a bucket. She says you could put them in water within the hour. Oh, thanks mom. <laughs> thanks mom. <laughs> um, Okay, I'll just make sure. Make sure I end around like six. That way they're not staying out too late. And then that'll be good because I have to head over to my D&D &D thing at like 6.30 anyways. Okay, so well, we have an hour left and I we've been chatting for well over an hour at this point. Should we do a little bit of Pal World, guys? Or, or do we want to talk more about this software development boot camp I'm looking at? <laughs> 
Actually, I think I need to get up, give up on this because it looks like it is going, it would cost a lot of money. Why? Why does education have to be so expensive? That's like, that's like literally a crime. If someone wants to learn about something, they should be able to. Tuition, 3,400. Residential. Okay, wait, I don't, I don't need residence. That's, okay, that's at least not as bad. So, course, wait, I'm actually confused. Requirements? Wait. Max grade, 12th grade. Is this for high schoolers? No. Okay, never mind. I'm too old, I guess. <sighs> my gosh, I, I don't know what to do with my life. Apply by 312, that's soon. Boot camp application and start dates. Okay, okay, I could do a part-time one? March 25th to October 3rd. That's kind of a long time. Okay, full-time coding schedule. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's a job! Okay, part-time. Classes are held on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., or 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. What the fudge? I can do that. I think I can do that. I'm assuming that you choose one of those times. Oh, here we go. Tuition, $15,000. thousand dollars off if uh, you're active duty service member I am not great here should we should we yes I can share the curriculum yes okay here's what it's saying so unit one the boot camp begins with a comprehensive foundations on ramp to support both intermediate and beginner coders designed to help all students reach a uniform skill level foundation covers the basic tenets of programming to prepare for the core curriculum which moves through more advanced specialized javascript concepts at a rapid boot camp pace um foundational software engineering curriculum html html and css introduction to javascript programming Advanced JavaScript, including closure, prototypical inheritance, and recursion. Web development, environment, ind and industry standard tools. Foundation on-ramp features. Supports learners of all skill levels. Student-centered inquiry-based learning in teams. I love that! Instructor-facilitated live online. Damn, it's online. No, that's not, that's not terrible, though. Okay, that's, that's unit one. Unit two, front end development, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, Git and GitHub uh, concepts, web, web interface and design. You learn how content and imagery are best displayed on a website. Front end framework, you'll start to understand pre-written modules and their primary use cases in web development. Features, pro, pair programming. Work, working with fellow students, you'll each use your newfound knowledge to write and optimize front end code. This helps you build a real world experience and prepare for technical coding interviews. Technology. Okay, unit three and four. JavaScript, JavaScript APIs, React, React Router, React Hooks, Redux, Test-Driven Development, Prototyping. Okay, last unit. JavaScript, SQL. Oh, not SQL! Ugh. I hated SQL. Um, yeah, honestly, honestly, I think that I should just wait for, like, AI to become, like, Amazing at coding. Sequel. Sorry. Sequel. Sequel. SQL. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sorry. It was forever. I took it like my sophomore year. Okay. Come on now. Give me some slack. Cut me some slack. 
Uh, she wants a machine that teaches code in a single button press matrix style. No, well, I just want to, okay, I don't want to, like, learn how to code all these languages like we just read, okay? I want to specifically learn how to build an app. Like, I, that's what I would want to do, is I would want to go to some boot camp where, like, the end, by the end of it, you know how to build an app. Like, I don't need to have all this, like, that was obviously for someone that's, like, trying to pursue a career as a software developer. When it's like, I'm not trying to pursue, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to do one thing in particular. I'm doing it for funsies. I'm having a goal in mind. So I don't feel like... <laughs> it doesn't work that way you learn all or nothing okay no all, languages are pretty different from each other i think that the most difficult language that i had to do in college was r i feel like that was the, that one was the most confusing to me you can learn that stuff in a community college for the flag say i got my own app i just feel like i always am thinking about all these app ideas that i'm like oh like i wish i could just make it most of the time like literally just so i can use it for myself like, I want something like that. Like, okay, here's one of my app ideas, and I swear to God, if anyone steals it, I'm gonna show up where you lit. No, okay, sorry, I don't wanna get banned, but, you know, I'm going to, my spirit, my soul will show up where your soul is and, you know, beat the hell out of your soul. But my soul, I wouldn't physically, you know. <laughs> is that allowed? Anywho, yeah, I'll find you in your favorite video game and murder you. Anyways, one of the apps that, like, literally a lot of the app ideas are, again, literally just apps that I want for my own self. And if other people use them and like them, cool beans. But ideally, it would be cool if I could just make apps for fun that I personally really want and would find useful. And then I could share it with you guys. And then you can also use them if you would get used for them. They'd obviously, like, be free. And hopefully there would be, like, no upkeep with it. That's kind of like I build an app and, like, maybe if people are finding bugs, I'll try and fix them or whatever. Like, that's kind of how, that's this is my dream. Okay, this is what I would like. And Dr. Vandalay, thank you for the tier one. Also, happy 15 months. I appreciate that. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you. Ding. Um, but I like I want an app where it's like my morning routine. Cause you guys know how I said like I just started doing a morning routine. Like I want an app where it's like okay, once I hit start on my morning routine, it has all the things that I do like in the order that I do them, and then as I do them, I can like complete them. And then there's like a timer for how long I should be doing these things. And then every time, like when the timer goes off, like I can either complete the task when the timer goes, I mean, I can extend the timer. I can be like, oh, like see the timer goes off. I'm still trying to finish that thing. I can like add five minutes or add 10 minutes. There can be like quick buttons that you can set. And then like, I just basic, and then like, it also makes it so that you can just like not, I'm trying to think about how, how I, I'm not doing a good job of explaining this whatsoever. I'm so sorry guys, but because I have these habit apps, I have these habit apps and I, they're nice because I like being able to have a checklist, but I want, I basically want a checklist with timers, with times and timers. And obvious, and it would also be cool if it can make it so that I can't do anything on my phone, like during certain tasks. Cause I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I'd be like, fucking, I'd be getting distracted. Okay, I'd be getting distracted. And then I'm like, fuck, like I'm behind schedule. Um, but I was like, oh, that, like, that would be like really cool. It's called reminder or schedule notes. No, cause that's not the same thing. Like I want something that's like cool where I can like, I would have my phone up. It would show me like what ta like how much time I have left, like blah, blah, blah. Cause it's like, I can use a bunch of different things to like do that. The, your app, okay, what's the app? What's the app? Let me know. I'll look it up right now. Cause I want something, but I don't want reminders. I want a morning routine or just like a routine app where I hit play and then there's timers for every activity. And then, cause I don't know about y'all, but something about like having the timer aspect, I feel like that kind of helps spur me a little bit more. I don't think that's possible. There. I just, I also wish that iPhone had things where like you can like make it so you can't open certain apps at certain times. <laughs> I need to block off Twitter for me in the morning. Cause I always, I get sucked into Twitter in the morning so bad. Like, cause I'm always like, oh, like my brain's sleepy. Like, let me just wake it up a little bit by going on Twitter. And then next thing you know, I'm like spending way too much time on it. You can build that app in five days as a beginner, by the way. See, that's what I'm saying though. Is like, I do feel like I, like the, a lot of the app ideas I, I think of are like super simple that I feel like if I had even just beginner, you know, knowledge, I could do it. So wait, you guys, are, you guys said Swift, right? Okay, maybe I'm gonna try this again. Maybe I'm gonna try this again. You guys said Swift, right? So like, say I wanna build apps like this. It, they're usually like this. 
where it's like I just have some like super basic idea that I could hopefully just I probably would just use for myself um should I do swift is that kind of the the go-to screen time is close thing for that if random ass could lock down your phone asshole does would troll people yeah I know I mean obviously it should be like you it asks you for permission do you want to let do you want to allow this app to restrict your time on certain apps or something like that or they should just build that feature into apple into the settings itself ah uh, you should stream while building the app and random cs people can help you true you can do that on iphone but it sucks you can just bypass the restriction yeah well i have like the time constraint but i want to make it so that like i literally cannot even i i i'll get that notification if i even open it in the morning or something i just add a bunch of alarms on my phone okay but i hate that i don't want that i want something that's like has a cute interface too there's one thing about me i'm a big interface girly okay make it look cute or else i'm not i'm not standing um which is why do people work harder for other people than they are willing to work for themselves wait what do you mean um Maybe you should have an, an accountability part in the app too. Oh my gosh, wait, the accountability part would be so cute. So it's like whenever you finish your routine, maybe it can like send a text to someone for you or something like that. And then like you have a friend that helps you and then your friend's like, hey, I haven't got, I didn't get your morning routine text. Have you done your things yet? Or something like that. Or you can like be friends, <gasps> or you can be friends with other people and you can have like streaks. Wait, that'd be so fun. That motivates me so much. Like when I was doing du Duolingo, oh my God, the streak literally was what motivated me to fucking keep doing that thing every day. See, like, I just think it's like little things like that because I feel like, I feel like I do so well when I gamify certain aspects of my life. Like I just love gamifying my life, okay? I love just pretending that my life is a video game, okay? I don't know why. It just, it can be something like, I just, gamifying your life is fun it's so fun and like that's what i want is i just want to make a bunch of little different apps that make life feel like a fun little video game because <laughs> then i begin addicted to things but that that are good for me like when i was doing duolingo like i loved like how it felt like a game and like how i had like the streak that i had to do and stuff like that because i would always be like wanting to play it and wanting to do it and i feel like i was like learning more because it like was fun because it felt like a game and like i just want to do that to all aspects of my life I just want to make a bunch of aspects of my life just feel like a video game and my game, yeah, and then like it's, I feel like it's good for keeping me motivated and stuff. I'm, I feel like I've heard of, you, I'm sure you guys have heard of like gamifying your life and whatnot though. Um, should I ask my parental culture? I have app functionality locked in other apps, which I'm pretty sure doesn't, it, yeah, I, it doesn't exist. You're, you're right, Dazarath. I was just saying it would be like, that'd be a nice, I would want that feature personally, but it would also just be nice to be able to add that into the Apple settings. Maybe apps shouldn't have that, but can Apple at least add that? Make it so you can like restrict like, oh, I can't go on this app at this time of day. You know what I mean? Cause I'm sure other people will benefit. Like maybe you can like block off your, block off your social media apps like during the work day to make sure that you're like not doing that. You know what I mean? Like, I just think it would be good to, to do that. Cause sometimes, cause like I said, I feel like it's like in the morning when like I'm like half awake, I'm like, I just open Twitter, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I know I shouldn't, but like, <laughs> um, what's your three good traits? What do you mean? I don't, what do you mean my three good traits? Uh, the Duolingo Al gives people, <laughs> what do you mean? It could be like a networking app where people can manage each other. Hmm. It could be. be business, business, business app. I will say, I feel like when I, if I, if I, ever, if I did, you know, actually start trying to build apps and stuff, I would definitely just be focused on building stuff that I think is like fun and like I would probably use. And then hopefully I would like learn a lot through all of that. Right. And then I'd get to a point where like I could build something that I'm like, I want people, I want other people to use this and I want this to be useful. You know what I mean? But I feel like we all got to start somewhere and I feel like, you know, doing fun little, fun little pr side projects or something is like probably a good place to start. At least in my mind, you know, I feel like you can like learn a lot by just kind of trying something. Thing. I'm your ass. Make sure you can share routines, maybe add competitions or tracking. For example, gym buddies want to track their progress or something. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Wait. Actually, this is like motivating me a lot. Um. Okay. For the people. Okay. Actually, has anyone in chat ever built an app? So, cause now I'm, I just want to know. Or I guess like taught yourself how to build an app. I don't know. Like what are resources? Like where's a good place that I can learn this? Like how, 
I guess, okay, if, you, if there's anyone, I build a fitness app. Okay, okay, cool. What would you, I build over to, oh shit. Okay, so then, so here's me, okay? I have some very beginner level knowledge in coding, um, mostly from when I was in school, so I honestly don't even remember um, some of it as much as like if I was a fresh grad, you know? Um, where would you recommend? Do you have like websites? Do you have like a certain creator that you think is really good at teaching this stuff? And obviously specifically with the intent of like building apps like this that are like pretty simple or like that's where I'd want to start. Um, like is there, what would you recommend? <laughs> you need to pay Apple about $100 a year to host the app on the store. That's fine. Maybe, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I... That's not too bad. A hundred, I mean, a uh, hundred, well, okay, a hundred is a lot, but a hundred for a year, not as bad. But I'd probably only, like, post, like, I'd probably only, like, have my, um, like, apps that I really try on live. Or maybe I'll just make all my apps, like, on the App Store for a year, and if no one's downloading it, I'll take it off. I'll give them a shot, you know? <laughs> You can probably use ChatGPT or Copilot. See, but I tried to use ChatGPT for coding and it like wasn't doing it. It like was, I don't know. I mean, obviously like I didn't really know how to code, but like the code just wasn't working. And then like, I didn't know what was wrong with it because like, I don't really know how to code. And like, I don't know, I tried. So I, TLDR, I tried with ChatGPT and it just like was not working with me. Although I guess oh, we're on ChatGPT 4. Hopefully one of the GPTs could work out for me. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, not work out for me, but just like work better at be better at coding than I feel like previous GPTs because I think when I filled around I think we were still on GPT-3 so I could try again with GPT-4 see how it goes Udemy Udemy oh multiple people said Udemy Udemy you dummy just kidding why are the two app builders quiet <laughs> okay let me look up this U Udemy Honestly, I'm gonna look back into this, okay? I was like disheartened, but I just think it would be really cool. Oh, wow. Become a pro copywriter. Aw, but these cost money? <sighs> okay, I guess I should have complained. I was just looking at a $15,000 boot camp, but I can pay $15. Okay, okay, so wait, hold on, hold on, wait, hold on. I'm taking a gander, guys. Um, so, uh, web, web, web development? iOS development? Bestseller. Eight point four, 60.5 hours, or we have this 8.5 hours. Maybe we should go with this girly. You'll learn Xcode, UI kit, Swift UI. What do we think? Do we trust this girl? Do you trust this girl or not? She looks trustworthy. <laughs> um, they always have sales. Okay, guys. Once I learn how to do this, I'm gonna make my own course, and then and then I'll teach you guys. I think it'll write. I don't think it'll, be, but it can definitely help you with specific tasks. ChatGPT, that is. That's good. I feel like even if I like did a course and I like learned and I just had more coding knowledge, that then I would be able to at least like work with GPT a little bit more. You know. How much did she was talking, but then completely lose interest after a single search? What are you talking about? If you want to learn how to do website stuff? The Odin project is really good. Hmm, I feel like not as much websites, honestly. I feel like I'd be more focused on apps and then... I mean, I feel like making websites are pretty easy nowadays. I got my- hey, I got my website. OMG! I never did my go live tweet or my freaking pinned chat message. But I have my website. Kaylee-May.com Check me out! <laughs> um... I 
gotta, should I make, oh, I meant to make a blog for, god, I, not, I need to start doing more on here. I kind of, I, I kind of built it and then I like didn't really do anything else with it, but I want to start doing more blog posts, guys. I just, I feel scared being, I don't, I, cause I feel like I was going to be vulnerable on my blog, but now I'm like, I do want to start doing blog posts about things though. Like me getting my apartment, like what I learned about that. And I don't know, just like all the things, anytime I like learn something in life, I feel like I should just make a blog post about it. Anywho, um, electrocution implies death. Oh, for real? <laughs> uh, if you want to do websites, oh, I already read that. Everything $15 sale? When's that? When's that? Why well, learn to code? Thought you were, I thought you already did consulting. Uh, I want to learn how to build apps so that I can just like build apps to for fun. Don't try to consult while I learn to code. Most flooded profession in the world right now. Oh, that's fine. I'm not trying to get a job. I'm just trying to like be able to build apps for fun. That's why. <laughs> uh, resume tips, please. Um, make sure your lot, your words go to the end of the page. Switch up your action words. Make sure you bold certain skills that you want to stand out. Um, use numbers, if you like manage a budget, say how big that budget was, if you manage a team of people, say how big that, that team was, um, yeah, it's kind of my general advice. I feel like I'm better at like giving resume feedback or something than, um, I used to be a pro resume builder. I took, cause I was, I'm not gonna lie. When I was, when I was in college, I was fucking crazy. Well, obviously as, as I should be, but I was crazy about getting a job. Okay. I was like, I was like, I'm, I need a job. I'm going to get a job. And so I like did all these resume boot camp things and a lot of like interview prep things. And so like low key, I feel like I do know how to make a good resume nowadays. Um, so that's cross platform and not just Apple iOS, like react native. Also use JavaScript, there should be lots of resources. I haven't used it myself though. Oh, for apps you need to understand logical programming languages. I started with C, I know C hashtag and vi mixed variations like Python. And after that, it's plain and simple to watch tutorial building iOS or Android apps. Web apps are a different story. I've never done it, but it's a bit more complex there. You'll have front end text design languages like HTML, CSS, JS variation, then back end for logic. Ugh, pick what you want. I mean, yeah, I think I'm gonna focus on apps first. I'll follow, let's see, I'll, I'll honestly, I might just like say fuck it and get this girl's, this girl's course. She says, you will create a portfolio of 15 apps to be able to apply for junior developer jobs at technology. Oh shit, wait, this is cool actually. She's like, she's saying by the end of this, if I get this course by the end of it, she says that I, I will have built 15 apps. That's fun. Okay, she said you will learn Xcode, UI Kit, and Swift UI, R, R Kit, A R Kit, Core ML, and Core Data. You will learn by doing, where every lesson is incorporated into a real-world app project. Wait, I love that! Oh my gosh! Wait, I should do this. 28, 28 bucks. Twenty-eight bucks, and I'm coming out of it with fifteen apps. I didn't have the heart to tell her. No, feel free to correct me. Feel free to correct me. Hey, I'm a student of life, okay? As well, I don't mind. I, I like I like when you guys I like learning things from you guys. I'll, of course, be respectful. Don't be like you stupid bitches like this. Um, but yeah, I mean Apple ones, but Apple Shadow Bandit, so I took it down. Oh no! Wait, maybe I will do this though. I'm like y'all are hyping me up. Okay, what am I? I'll look more into this afterwards. But that'll be fun. Okay, you guys better download one, at least one of my 15 apps, okay? Y'all better download it. And if you don't, then you're not a real Kaylian. You're a fake fan. Um, C sharp, okay. Lesson number one, learned. I am a pro CS girl now, right guys? <laughs> uh, the Asian in her is like, what a good deal. <laughs> yes, exactly, I, I love a good deal. I love a good deal. Okay. Um, 
Mm. Oh wait, should I take a picture with my with my flowers? I'm not gonna even do this go live tweet anymore, but <laughs> Oh my god, they're so big. Should I take off my glasses? Wait, I have I'm gonna I'm gonna send this pic to my mom. my desk oh well love that um okay Ugh. Ugh. definitely a fake fan then get the hell out of here um <laughs> you are so shiny sorry i have oily skin okay better than being dry as the fucking sahara desert I will say that, I will say, even though I have oily skin and it annoys the hell out of me, I'm glad that I don't have dry skin because when I was on this acne medication when I was like in high school, maybe it was college, I don't know, like it made my skin so dry and I was like peeling and I was like, oh, like I couldn't even wear makeup, I was, I, cause it like literally looked so bad, but yeah, even though I'm a shiny egg, okay, it's my, it's, it's my Asian. It's the Asian in me. Dry skin is the worst. Dry skin is the worst. Like, I would take oily skin over dry skin. I mean, but it would be ideally if I was just, like, in the middle and had neither. And I just had, like, regular fucking <laughs> regular skin. That would be actually the best case scenario, but it's fine. Um, and it was intense. If I sweat, it burned. Oh, really? I'd carry chapstick on me 24 seven. Oh my goodness. You know, I started like smothering, actually hack, if anyone is on like some super drying acne medication, just cover your face in aquaphor. Every night, you'll, you're gonna be glossed up like a fucking snail, just glided over your face, but your skin will not be drying anymore. So definitely, yeah, I, that's, that's my recommendation. Get that, get that fat ass tub of aquaphor and lather yourself up. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> also, why does I why do I look like so blue? Why do I look so blue? I'm just like more purple. I don't know. Um when I was a kid, I had lots of time to waste. I was doing side projects like server assembly, coding, electrical. Damn, for me the drive was A, what I wanted to accomplish, B, start Googling. I remember spent like three days to open damn when you were a kid like okay how old are we talking here learn how to change instruction in linux especially through windows the drive gets you far damn let's see what was i doing when i was a kid playing sims playing minecraft <laughs> um I, I guess i was a reader i was a reader kid i was like when i was like a kid kid i was like obsessed with reading and i would read all the time that was like what i poured my childhood obsession into would have been nice if I would have done something a little more useful, like learning how to code, but you know, as it goes, eh, there's worse things to be obsessed with as a child than reading, I will say. Man, now, now that's making me think, okay, when I got kids, I gotta make sure that they pour their, like, obs whatever their childhood obsession is, is like something that's good and useful for them in the long run. I guess you can't really control that, though. Kids be having their brains melted on YouTube nowadays. Like 12, 19, this is me all the time. What? Nine if I kill my drive mostly. Wait, what? Do you like do the same kind of things? Like, are you like a software developer? I was on Accutane when I was a teenager. Everything was driver. Oh my gosh. Oh, Accutane. Yeah, no, I, I should have done Accutane. I regret that I never did Accutane because I have really bad acne problems. And I just feel like if I would have done Accutane, I wouldn't be struggling with these still. Kevin, thank you so much for the tier one. Thank you, thank you. Happy 32 months. Okay, hold on guys, sorry. I feel like my, I feel like this lighting is like very white. It's like washing me out a bit. There, now I don't look like a ghost, right? Um, but thank you! It seems like last year you were in Mexico with the old- <laughs> I know, that was so long ago, oh my goodness. But thank you, how you been? 
Um, wait, that's the same shot. Wait, oh, oh, what Accutane? Yeah, no Accutane. I, I feel like if my acne is really this bad for the for like much longer, I might go on Accutane at some point. But uh, I just I can't with like the blood getting drawn. Shit, like I'm sorry. I'm gonna try and do everything besides that. Ooh, ooh. Um. Lots of memories, so those days. I'm gonna hope it's also with you. Yeah, I know we were just talking about how I think I'm gonna try and learn how to build an app. All right, guys, maybe we'll do it. Should I do like a coding stream? Would you guys hang out with me while I coded? I would chat with you guys, obviously. But that would, oh my god, wait, that would be perfect for like focus, for like focus streams. We could do like, oh, like focus with me type of, I don't know. I like see those streams and like, I'm like, that'd probably be a good idea because it'd kind of be like an accountability type of thing, you know? I like Rick Owens because he launched his business for better or for worse and married to the game. Who the fuck is Rick Owens? <laughs> we can learn code with you. No, I'm just gonna make my own course and sell it on these things and hopefully become like a millionaire. Like, let's take a gander at this girl. Let's take a gander at this girl's course. She has 89,569 reviews. So this is just, we'll just go, we'll only go based off of the people that reviewed her. It's normally $170 on sale for $28 right now. What the fuck? That's $2.5 million. And obviously that's only the people that reviewed. So more people have probably got her course. I imagine the website probably takes a cut. We'll say she probably got at least two mil. Damn, that's really what I need to be doing in life, okay? I, ugh. all right, life path found. I'm just gonna learn, I'm gonna learn some cool ass skills and then I'm gonna make courses and sell it, sell that knowledge. And then hopefully other people can like learn it and like they feel like it's a good investment for them. What are things that you would like buy a course for? Yo, know, lifetime play. <laughs> no, I just have like, I just have these ones sitting, sitting by my desk. Hi, Mumpy. I did have a good holiday. Are you British? Holiday? <laughs> what do people call vacation holiday? Every follower bought a course. No, that was just the reviews. That was the reviews. Mmm. Mmm. Gosh, I love, I love Reese's. One of the best candies of all time. Fire! Whose course was this? The course I'm about to buy. I'll take it first and then I'll, I'll let you guys know if the course is good. But, man, I'm gonna have to like make time for that. Low key life already be stressing me out a little bit, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but maybe maybe like after March because I have like my birthday and then I have my birthday trip and then some of my friends are trying to convince me to go skiing. I might be losing my mind this March, so. <laughs> but April, I don't think I have anything planned for April, really. Um, I was just have to go to the reason. Sorry, sorry. Um, do 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 do. Oh. Already chatted for like two hours. Maybe I shall go now. Let's see, 5.37. I have my DNP thing at seven. I need to handle these flowers though and still get ready for that. Let's see, I'd probably be leaving in like an hour. Maybe it is a good time. Maybe it is a good time to dip. Uh, I'm hitting the dirty 30s in two days. Damn, that's exciting though. Two days, March 1st, <gasps> tomorrow's leap day. Oh my gosh, we have to like celebrate. March 2nd? Oh, so in like three days, we got leap day. We got leap day, don't forget. Don't forget about leap day. Um, are you doing anything big for your birthday? I think I think I might have a party, but I'm getting like nervous because I want to have my party on March 9th and I haven't like 
planned or invited people yet, and I feel like that's, like, low-key coming up soon, so. Ugh, I literally, I wrote it down to plan on Friday. I'm gonna plan and send out invitations on the 1st. Gives me one last day to enjoy the 20s. <laughs> that's funny, actually. Damn. Yeah, hopefully I do something good for my birthday. Our birthdays are pretty close to each other. See you there in 2.5 years or less than half hours on... Damn. Where's Mochi? You need a tickle? He's out there. He was hanging out with me in here earlier, but... I don't know. Not any longer. Um, okay, question. Do you think you can drink an entire gallon of milk in one hour? Probably, but I'd probably throw up. I think I'm, like, slightly lactose intolerant. I do be getting those those tummy issues from too much dairy sometimes. Unfortunately. I'm a victim. What can I say? Oh shit, I just realized actually that I want to eat before I go to my class. Okay, Chad, I think I'm gonna peace out because I'm just realizing that I need to make dinner, eat dinner, take apart this bouquet, trim them, Put them into vases, get ready, and I need to do all of that before seven, before 6.30, which is in less than an hour. <laughs> um, so, okay, I, but, but, I, um, will be streaming tomorrow. Streaming tomorrow, um, since I, we did a shorter stream today and on Monday, so I just chatted the whole time. We are gaming tomorrow. We are gaming. I'm gaming. We are playing Baldur's Gate 3, I'm thinking, or PAL. I mean, we could do one last PAL World stream, or should we just say fuck it and, like, get back into Baldur's Gate 3? Because we're in Act 2. I really want to finish Baldur's Gate. Um, such a good game, and I was, like, getting really into it when we were playing. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Maybe I'll do a poll when we're, like, doing the chatting part of stream to see what people are more interested in. Or maybe I'll do a poll on Twitter. I'll do a poll on Twitter, probably. Um, but yeah, we I'll probably do either Pal World or Baldur's Gate. I'm kind of leaning towards Baldur's Gate because I really want to finish it. And we can go back to Pal World at some point because Pal World was really fun. But I just feel like I'm so deep with like reading Lord of the Rings and like doing D&D. Like I'm so deep in my fantasy wave that I'm like, I want to go back to Baldur's Gate. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for a great stream. I will see you guys tomorrow. And since we're gaming, it'll probably be a longer stream. Woohoo. Um, so super excited for that. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, sound good. Um, let me think. What was I gonna say? Um, I forgot. Um, well, thank you everybody that subs or gifted subs or gave bits or donated. I appreciate your support towards my channel so so much. Heart. Um, let's rate Claire because she's live. She's never live when I'm ending. This is perfect. So we're gonna go raid my friend Claire. We were just in the Dominican Republic together. Woohoo. Um, and yeah, give her give her some love. We are, we're IRL friends. And hopefully we're gonna be doing more collabs in the future. I was telling her, I was like, we should do, we should try to do like a, a collab together like once a week. Like a little cooking stream or like, I don't know, or play a game together or something like that. So let's ev everyone bully Claire into like doing more collabs with me. <laughs> Actually, no, don't blame her, but you know, you know, just go say hi. I don't know. I don't know. Um, ooh. And also shout out my amazing mods for, for keeping chat super safe and friendly and amazing. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for some fun. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. See you. Bye.